In the last two years, many government workers have seen a combined 9% pay increase in their salaries. But their dollars do not have the same buying power. This is because of inflation. Everything from a bag of chips all the way up to health insurance, it costs more now. And because of this, many people feel like these pay raises, they're not enough. Recently, congressional Democrats have introduced legislation that would provide an average pay raise of 7.4% next year. This would be the highest pay raise since 1980 when President Carter authorized a 9.1% pay raise. To be clear, this would be a 4% across the board pay raise and an average of 3.4% in locality pay. So for government workers that live in larger cities, big metropolitan areas, they would see the full 7.4%. Of course, this is only an introduction. This is expected to be debated in Congress. A lot of Congress members might not agree with it. The next major hint on what the actual pay raise will be is when the president proposes it probably sometime in March. If you remember last year, the FAIR Act was introduced. This stands for Federal Adjustment of Income Rates. It called for an 8.7% pay raise in 2024. Now, obviously, we didn't get that. We had a smaller number come in. So they're going to continue to discuss it, see what the feasibility is. Now, the big push for this is because numbers came out and it shows the gap increasing between the private sector and the public sector. It went from 22% disparity to 24%. That signifies that the gap is growing. A lot of experts, they suggest this is the reason why it's so difficult to attract and retain talent when it comes to getting people into federal government jobs. Now, this gap is measured in different ways. You have to look at the exact occupation because it's not going to be the same across the board. Let's pull a random example up and look at executive assistants. On average, they get paid $64,000 a year in this country. Now let's jump on to usajobs.gov and see what the federal government is paying their executive assistants. On average, most executive assistants are between GS9 and GS14. Let's just look at the lower end of that. Let's look at GS9. GS9s in most places, they earn between $60,000 and $77,000 a year. Step five, that would put you at $67,000 a year. So when it comes to executive assistants, I don't think the private sector is paying them more. They're about the same, and if anything, the federal government's probably paying them a little bit more. But if you take this type of study, you take this attention, you put the spotlight on a different industry, let's look at engineering, law, medical professionals, cybersecurity professionals. Okay, well, when you look over there, they're getting paid a lot more. They're getting equity in companies sometimes. They have some sort of stock incentive when they're working at that company, especially when you make it up into the, the C-suites, right? So you can't compare those professions with the same in the government. In the government, they're using the pay band, right? GS-13 is GS-13, GS-15 is GS-15. It doesn't matter what you do. You could be a GS-15 focused primarily on administrative tasks, or you could be a lawyer, or you could be an engineer, and they're going to get paid similarly. Now, there are some agencies that have implemented special salary rate in order to provide a greater incentive, and that's being used as a retention tool. But let's stop and think, what if this 8.7% comes into fruition? What if it's reality? How would that look in your paycheck? Well, if you live in a big city, let's say DC, Los Angeles, New York City, if you live in a big city, then you're going to get the full 8.7%. And that could look like this. In DC, a GS9 Step 1 could go from $68,000 to $74,000 a year. A GS12 Step 1 could go from $99,000 to $107,000 a year. A GS15 Step 7 could go from $191,000 a year to $208,000 a year. Obviously, the higher you are on the pay grade, the more money you're currently making, the more an 8.7% pay raise is going to impact your paycheck. But the top pay doesn't max out at GS-15. There are other ways where you can exceed that amount. The first way is with the Senior Executive Service, called SES. And the second way is looking at other pay bands that different federal agencies offer. So let's look at SES. If you want to be an SES, you can either be career track or you could be political. If you want to do career, those jobs are on usajobs.gov. You can select the filter and you can search through them and apply. The, the application process, the resume, the whole thing, it's a little bit different. 
Now, if you want to be political, you would go to the whitehouse.gov website and you would submit an application and you could do that as well. SES will take you out probably, I think, to $246,000 a year. But that's not the whole story because we have bonuses and SESs that receive bonuses. We're talking in the five figures. We're talking 10, 11, 12, $15,000 at the end of the fiscal year. That would be on top of your salary. So I would say on the high end in SES, political SES is probably earning well over $250,000 a year. Okay, that's one way. Another way, let's look at different pay bands. Because if you look at FDIC, if you look at the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, they have a different pay band. FDIC has CG as a pay band. That goes to $250,000 a year. You don't have to be an SES. If you look at FAA, they have a pay band called FV. That goes over $200,000. The VA has a VM pay band. That goes over $200,000. So there are different ways if you need that higher salary. Now, the final decision on the pay raise for 2025 is not what's said in Congress. It's not what's said on news articles. It will come down to an executive order in December. December 2024, an executive order will come out from the president and that is what's gonna establish the pay raise and we will see it in January 2025. But there is one thing I do want to stress and that is you are not guaranteed a pay raise. Just because it's the end of the year does not mean the president is going to issue out an executive order and give us a certain percent. In fact, there were multiple years in recent memory where we received 0%. Look at 2011 through 2013. We had three zeros during those three years. No pay was increased at that time. So the best way for you to ensure and lock in your pay raise is to start looking at opportunities at the next higher grade. If you're sitting there or standing there and you've been a GS-11 for the last five plus years, get your GS-12. And maybe it's not in your agency. Maybe those opportunities are not in your office. You're going to have to look at another agency and God forbid, you might have to move. I don't know where, maybe in state, maybe out of state, but if you want to chase after the larger salaries, the bigger opportunities, more responsibility, more rewards, higher bonuses, if that is what is on your mind, if that's an aspiration or a goal that you have for yourself this year, next year, the year after that, it's going to involve getting out of your current position and start looking at the other opportunities. Start applying to them. If you are interested in a federal government job or your next government job, maybe it's been a while since you applied, the last time you applied. If you want a refresher on the exact steps on what you can expect going through it from the application to the referral to the interview to the job offer, if that interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.